Go. Okay. Happy Friday. My name is Don Stevens, and this is Finding God in the Dark. Um, awesome. I am uh, Reverend Doctor. We would just pull out all the stops, right? Man? <laughs> there you go. Or as most people call me, Evan. Uh, I'm uh, Evan Dodds, pastor uh, here in New Jersey, and we're going to talk movies. We are going to talk movies, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's do introductions. Ev? Yeah, I caught you with Hey, you. Don, so, I, yeah, I'm always drinking some coffee or something here in my office. Um, I have a Keurig right behind me, and so that's just, you know, keeps right me well there. caffeinated. <laughs> so, I'm Evan Dodds. I'm pastoring in uh, uh, New Jersey, at the Greater New Jersey Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, pastoring St. Paul's UMC in Brick in Ocean County. Not far from the shore, not far from where you pastor for for several years. Eleven years. And, um, Eleven years. So I'm here. I'm in my second year now. Uh, I'm start my third year in July. Um, uh, born and raised in Maine. I went to the University of Maine. Moved down to New Jersey to go to uh, Drew Theological School for seminary. Met my wife Amanda, who's from Baltimore. She was a pastor in training then, uh, doing her student internship at a Methodist church, and she pastored herself for 13, 14 years, and is now the full-time director of music ministries at my current appointment, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I passed it in the conference for 12 years. Uh, during that time, I went back to school, got my doctor of ministry degree at United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio, where I also adjunct now. So I have a very full plate, very full life. Uh, four kids, uh, married to Amanda, uh, serve here in the full-time appointment, teach as well in seminary, serve in many ways within the annual conference um, as a clergy mentor, candidacy mentor on DCOM. Uh, and I'm drinking a, mu a, a coffee out of a mug right now for Firebrand. You can sort of see it through the virtual background. Firebrandmag.com is a... a of a pan wesleyan magazine devoted to kind of the life of the mind and bringing bringing faith and academics and the church life together in conversation and so i i serve on the editor uh, editorial board of that so just a full life don a lot of stuff going on man you my Hope friend have, you my friend have a very full plate <laughs> yes yes i do and um but I'm uh, God's grace. I can most of the time keep them all spinning and only drop a few here and there. Amen. Amen. Well, my name is Don Stevens. Um, I am current annual conference. I right now serve what's considered a two point charge. So I have two churches. Uh, this one here where it, my main office is, is Asbury United Methodist in Woodstown. And then I serve a somewhat smaller church a few miles over, uh, St. John's United Methodist in Harrisonville. Um, two very lovely congregations with very different, uh, they're very different. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Mm -hmm. They're uh, compatible, but different. Um, gotcha. I am uh, married 30, oh, it'll be 33 years. Uh, in June to my lovely wife, Bonnie. We have four children. Um, our oldest is ooh, 39. <laughs> she just turned 39 in uh, February. And she okay. lives in North Carolina. And she is my wife from her first marriage. I adopted her when she was nine. And then my other three children are 18, 14, and 11. And they are adopted foster kids. Uh, my 18-year-old goes to Rutgers University. She's in her spring semester of her freshman year. And my two boys are the youngest ones. They're uh, uh, handful one and handful two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have uh, been serving in the, in the United Methodist Church for over 20 years now. Uh, I started, uh, I was commissioned as a candidate or no i was certified as a candidate in 2000 uh i took my first full-time appointment when i graduated seminary in 2004 
Uh, I was ordained. Well, I was commissioned in 2011. I was ordained in 2014. Um, I have served churches in Salem, Gloucester, uh, and Ocean counties. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Salem, Gloucester, and Ocean. Uh, okay. So I served I served as youth pastor in Gloucester County and Woodbury, and then I had two churches in Salem County, one in Ocean County up where near where Evan's at. Mm -hmm. uh, just a few miles away. It's, it's sad because, you know, being friends, we were only together in that area for one year. We only overlapped. Oh, I know. <laughs> but, yeah, man. Um, let's see. And I have a real passion um, in ministry for finding that area where popular culture and theology and Christian faith sort of overlap. Uh, I think it comes primarily from a class that I had in my my middler year in seminary. For those who don't understand how seminary works, seminary is three years. You have junior year, middle year, senior year. My right. middle year of seminary, I was actually able to register for a class that was only really offered to seniors. I don't know how I got in, but I got in. But it was called Preaching from the Movies. And um changed the way I thought about movies and really pop culture in general. Um, people, uh, when I talk about finding God in the movies or, or seeing God in popular culture, people say, well, you know, that's got to be really hard nowadays. I said, it's not as hard as you think it is. Um, if you're willing to look, you know, a lot of us just look at some, you know, I think a perfect example is the Harry Potter movies. You know, so many people dismissed the Harry mm -hmm. Potter movies for years because, well, they have magic and they have witchcraft. And, you know, what people neglect to look into is things like the author, J.K. Rowling, uh, studied medieval Christianity in college. And she has incorporated so much christian symbolism into those films and into those books that people don't recognize because they're too busy going it's magic it's witchcraft don't do that and it's yeah yeah so, yeah uh, c.s lewis why in the uh, chronicles of narnia series got some of the same criticism probably not as strongly as Rowling has for the harry potter series but he got some of that back when that was first written and i don't think there's is really many serious christians today who would dismiss that as magical or non-christian i mean that is so Absolutely thoroughly not. christian exactly you know? um so enough about us let's talk a little bit about movies f um i have i'm gonna say i have a huge dvd collection and blu-ray collection um i have five streaming services that i subscribe to so mostly on those streaming services i watch movies uh, mm -hmm. I, I got a big, you know, I got a big thing for movies. So, uh, what kind of movies do you like? <laughs> I mean, I, I like, I like, a lot. I love horror. I like thrillers, action movies. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, you know, I like a lot of the, you know, the superhero genre. So a lot of the Marvel and DC movies, um, I'll watch and, um, but I think if I, if I were like sitting down to Netflix or, or Hulu or one of the one of those uh, giant services and scrolling through I kind of look for the horror thriller stuff first yeah I might scan for like what's new that week you know what they've just uploaded right uh but uh, it, it, I'll often go to those genres first and if I don't find anything there I'll move along from there uh I also um I also really like um like kind of World War II period movies okay yeah so, so so is it easier to ask you what kind of films you don't like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i don't like yeah i don't know if this is still really even a genre it was popular when i was you know younger but like the romantic comedy rom-com stuff i no hard I don't, pass I don't really enjoy, yeah i don't really enjoy that um i would say dramas now that's a pretty broad kind of undefined category i suppose sure. but there's not a whole lot in that that I really like. I don't really like period stuff, you know, from say the 19th century. And so no, no um, Pride and Prejudice or, you know, no, not <laughs> all in Austin. No, no, oh no. 
<laughs> God bless. Um, yeah, me either. I, I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah, not not interested in that. I um, sci, but I, I well, I love sci-fi. I love fantasy. Um, I I do probably well. My we'll, we'll get into favorite movies maybe of, of all time later on. But, yeah, sure. Uh, I say my two of my top three of all time are in the sci-fi fantasy genre. So. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what about I, you? What do you like? I tell you, very much, uh, very much the same. Uh, it, I have. It's interesting because I have a cabinet. I have a couple of cabinets in the living room with a lot of my DVDs and Blu-rays in them. Okay. Which anybody can pull out one and watch one. Take it to their bedroom. Watch, you know, any of my kids take it up and watch it in their bedroom. Right? And then there's the cabinet in my office at home. Okay. It's movies and nobody's allowed to take dad's movies without <laughs> permission. <laughs> so what are some of the movies that we would find in that cabinet? Um the okay, the entire box set of the Lord of the Rings films, the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films and the Hobbit films. Uh in the extended editions, of course, you know, the ones where if you sat and watched them all together, it would be an entire day of one story, right? Yes. Um uh the uh, star wars films the mm -hmm. um the alien films um a lot of superhero films similar to so again i think our tastes run kind of parallel to each other no yeah. i don't care for chick flicks not much into rom rom-coms uh yeah. i do like a good i mean i've found you know the occasional like straight drama film that I really appreciate. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, I think one that made a huge impact on me back when I was doing youth ministry years ago was um, Traffic. If you ever saw that one. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, like back before, I I don't remember who starred in it off the top of my head, but it this, okay. is, this is at least 20 or is probably a late 90s film um and and it oh I, yeah my, what about was, drug trafficking yeah uh yeah. don Cheadle was in that yes don michael Cheadle. douglas yeah okay yeah. yeah that one i saw that um you know like huge impact on on uh you know how i viewed kind of drama films you know mm -hmm. um I I loved back now i'm, I'm going to date myself now cuz i'm i'm a little older than you are um when it came out and they just <laughs> when it came out in theaters i i loved amadeus which is oh yeah yeah which yeah. is not a you know it's not a um you know not a sci-fi film you know it's a it's a right. historical drama I, this is the one thing i love about um historical films is they're never quite a hundred percent historical right mm -hmm. like that's true you, I don't know. Do, do you have Disney Plus? Mm -hmm. Okay. So have you watched Hamilton? No, I, I, uh, my, my wife and kids love it. I, <laughs> I just can't. Oh, I oh am I going to make you watch Hamilton? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> this will be a short lived podcast. I think if, <laughs> uh, if I have to do that, <laughs> I've heard the soundtrack enough to not want to watch the movie. The, well, I only bring it up because it is popular in my household. My wife and I both love it, but it does take liberties with the story. Sure, you know it's not it's not a hundred percent historical, right. um, and I, I think I mean you can understand that because look, you can't tell a story that spans you know two or three years or ten years or fifteen years in two hours or two and a half hours, you know, without taking some liberties and you know condensing things a little bit right, right. um so yeah so so what would be um right now give me your top three like and again i i, I don't like to necessarily stick to my top three list because i'll think of like oh my five favorite bands my 10 favorite songs my, my top three tomorrow, film? right now right now what are your three top three films of all time yeah uh well, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Okay. Because I think my number one would be the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Okay. That's um, fine. A trilogy not like... The, can... Not the Hobbit, 
because the Hobbit was one book that they expanded into three films. Right. The Lord of the Rings was three books, three films. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's my number one, primarily because when I was a teenager, I read the Lord of the Rings over and over probably four or five times. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when that, when Peter Jackson made it into it, like I loved back in the seventies, you know, Rankin Bass did the Hobbit and then, and then, um, Oh gosh, who was the animator? Ralph Bakshi did a a version of Lord of the Rings that was done with uh, rotoscoping animation. That was fascinating, but he didn't do all three. He did the first two books and then Rankin Bass came back and did Return of the King. Um, So it was a different style. Um, But I loved those back when I was in my, you know, my early 20s, my teens and 20s. And, um, And then when Peter Jackson recreated that, I went, you know, true story. I went to the theater. I was actually, went to a matinee on a Monday. I was there by myself, basically. There were maybe three other people in the theater. And I'm sitting there and as these these vast, you know, these big vistas open up on the screen, right? I'm sitting there with like tears rolling down my face going, it's real. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. It was just, it was real. It was an experience. Mm-hmm. um so that's that's always because i just loved the book so much and i think peter jackson did did real justice to and again he still had to condense and take some characters out and things like that but he did justice yep. to the stories in the way that he told them um so that's that's easily my number one um after that it becomes really difficult because you know, it depends on what day it is, you know. Yes, I, I get that, yeah. <laughs> but just for today, what would the other two be? Oh, geez. Well, I mean, right now, we've been watching Hamilton a lot. So that one would okay. probably rank up in my top three, just because I enjoy, I think it's just so emotionally well done. Um, it, it just, you know, particularly... Leslie Odom Jr., who plays Aaron Burr in the play, um, he's a great vocalist. He is a great actor, and you know that story. That story arc from you know coming in, he's kind of the guy that knows things, and he's trying to advise Hamilton, and then he kind of turns and becomes enemies, and then he's the villain, and and it's just his whole story arc is just fascinating. You know, um, third, <laughs> I don't know. After that, maybe I, I, I think maybe one of the, one of my favorite films of all time would be Aliens, Alien trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um, just I think because it broke the mold. Um, Absolutely, yes. The, we're running out of time. Um, it broke the mold insofar as, um, you know, film and then sequel, not as good. Whereas Alien, the film was fascinating. The first film was just amazing, right? Yes. Um, which yes. came out, I was, I don't know, 13 maybe when the first one came out. And then when the second one came out a few years later, it was better. Mm-hmm. Which just, you know. Yep. <laughs> So, so Alien is probably my number three. Okay, I love it. The '79 film, like I, I just you know the, the the uh, you know the set design with H.R. Geiger. Uh, you know, of course, I love Ridley Scott. I love Sigourney Weaver. Right, the um, original. Right. So that's the original favorite movie of all time is The Big Lebowski. Okay. Favorite okay. movie of all time. Um, I, and, I, you know, I have to admit, I've only seen bits and pieces of that one. Never seen the whole thing. All right. Well, I know what my challenge for you is um, <laughs> the Big Lebowski, and probably number two, um, probably Rear Window um, or Vertigo by Hitchcock. Okay. I'm a big Hitchcock, Hitchcock fan. Um, I love psychological horror. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I don't think there's anybody better um, in in all of film who who's, who does that quite like Hitchcock does. So yeah. 
See, those would be my top three. And, and, and I, Predator is a is an honorable mention. I love Predator. I'm with you there, particularly with horror, because you know so much of horror that's made today is slasher films. Yep. Bad guy yep. with a knife kills a bunch of teenagers. You know, I yeah. love you know like you want to see a great horror film that's still you know okay gory if you want. Go see Cabin in the Woods. Love. That movie. <laughs> love that movie because you're watching it you're going what is all this uh i don't huh and then when you finally realize what's going on like it's it just yep. changes the whole film yes yeah so yep. all right so yep. we gotta we gotta pick a film first off who's gonna watch one this week i think we should both watch it and then um we'll have like a perspective of somebody who's seen it before and somebody yeah. just watching it for the first time. And then we'll talk about the theology. And that, that's going to be primarily what we're doing here is we're finding where is God in the film? Where does it speak to um, the nature of Christian faith or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, so um, that way we, you know, we're both kind of have a fresh, fresh look at it. But one of us is right. seeing it for the first time. So do you want to challenge or be challenged in the first week? Why don't I challenge you to watch The Big Lebowski all the way? <laughs> watch the full movie. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, all, all I, Most of what I know of that film is The Dude Abides. <laughs> That's about all I really know. Uh, huh. That is, I think, one of the most quotable movies Um you know, to our listeners, I maybe give a caveat. Uh, you know, uh, there's there is a lot of foul language in it. Um, you know, I, well, so be mindful I, of that. For those for those that um, are watching for the first time, um, and and I hope you know, I hope we get lots of folks to watch. A few things. One, I don't think, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, Evan. I don't think we have any intention whatsoever to monetize this podcast. I think this is just you and I talking about movies and trying to connect our faith and the faith of the the Christian church to pop. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and it's and it's a way to hang out because now we're an hour and a half apart. Yeah, and that that as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and I think the other part of it is that um, hopefully, what we're doing for people who are going to watch this is giving that to be able to do this, to look at, at the world you live in and see where God is present in the places you wouldn't expect. Yes. Yes. And I think too, you know, just, just because we may recommend a movie or challenge one another to see a certain movie doesn't mean we endorse everything in the movie. Oh, absolutely not. There's certainly, there's certainly films that, um, and I've done, I've done a, um, video series called pd on pop culture uh which you know i'll, I'll self-promote if you want to look it up on my youtube channel it's out there but um and and that's one of the things i will say look i don't recommend this for certain audiences if this sort of thing bothers you don't watch it um right. etc not everything look if we talk about for instance dogma there's going to be a lot of right. people who are offended by that movie sure but there's also you know, if you can be as offended as you want, there's still some redeeming quality in that film. Um, and I think that's the kind of thing that we want to pull out of these films as we talk about them. So, yes, yes. Well said. <laughs> OK, so uh, then the challenge this week is for me to watch The Big Lebowski. Yes. And next week yes. uh, we will get together and we will talk about it. Um, yeah. In the meantime, I have seen that through 55, 56 times. You you keep track? Yeah. Because <laughs> that's I'm, like, you know, I'm I'm one of those guys who like if I'm surfing through the channels and the Shawshank Redemption is on, I'm gonna stop and watch it. Yes, and, yes, sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and this is but this one, I mean <laughs> if you stop and watch it when it's on TV, you know, every third word is gonna be picked up yeah so it's kind of <laughs> makes it hard to watch i i used there's a scene in that movie um 
And then, then we'll probably wrap up right now because our time sure. soon here is winding down. There's a scene in that movie where, uh, you know, so bowling and the bowling alley is a big part of the movie. And there's a scene where they meet uh, uh, Jesus, who's this Hispanic guy, and he's a bowler, uh, and he has a, a checkered past. And so uh, Walter, Donnie, and the dude are kind of there sitting on the bench looking at him, and they're not impressed. And they have these looks on their faces like, you know, whatever. So I have that picture framed in uh, in the half bathroom downstairs, which is great because then every once in a while I'll have a guest over and they'll go in the bathroom and all of a sudden you'll hear this, whoa! And it's like they'll be on there doing their business and there's these three guys just looking at them like... Just looking at them. <laughs> like this. And it's funny when people notice or look in the bathroom and say, oh, wow! I was, you know, doing my business and there they were staring at me. All right. So... That's what we're going to watch. I'm going to challenge folks at home if you would like to watch that film as well. And um, if you tune in next week, uh, when we publish next week, you'll have a leg up and, and uh, kind of understand what we're talking about when we get there. Um, until then, um, I I'm looking forward to this because I think it's going to be a blast. Yeah. And I hope yeah. that those who, who tune in to watch uh, have just as much fun with it as we do um so Absolutely. i'm trying to see what i wrote here so okay <laughs> so until then i'm going to challenge all of you folks keep looking for god in the movies i'm don i'm evan and god bless peace